So now I want to talk about antibody effector function. When a B cell recognizes a pathogen and undergoes processes to activate, uh, the end result is going to be secretion of antibodies. What are those antibodies going to do? Well, it depends on the different antibody isotypes. So here we have a naive B cell, um, and we know naive B cells have on their surface uh, IgM and IgT. And so when B cells um, activate, they recognize a pathogen, and we're going to go into detail into this process later, um, what will happen is that the B cell will differentiate. It will turn into a cell that can do things like secrete antibodies. So this cell, the activated B cell, will divide and differentiate and turn into a type of cell, let's say a plasma cell, that would secrete antibodies. So this uh, activated B cell could secrete antibodies. Some of the daughter cells could also turn into other types of B cells that uh, changed their antibody isotype. We call that isotype switching. And they would secrete different types of antibodies, for example, IgG. So recognizing a pathogen using an immunoglobulin can allow that cell to differentiate and release antibodies of different isotypes, IgM, IgG, IgA, depending on the need to fight the pathogen. So in this video, I just want to talk uh, and introduce the concepts of different antibody isotypes and what they do to fight uh, infection. So let's talk about IgM first, because it's typically the first antibody made upon recognizing an infection. And one of the reasons is because naive B cells already make IgM, although it's bound to their membrane. So it's actually pretty easy and quick to just take that IgM and start secreting it. And if you recall in a previous video, we learned about how B cells can switch from making a membrane bound immunoglobulin to a secreted immunoglobulin, thus called an antibody. So that process is very easy to do. So B cells can do that rather quickly. And that's one of the reasons IgM is one of the first antibody, it's actually the first antibody isotype secreted. So let's talk a little bit about how, IG, how IgM is going to function. And for all the antibody isotypes, I'd like you to know how they function, as well as where the antibodies are typically located and some other characteristics of the antibody. So uh, I can tell you that with IgM, it's typically a low affinity antibody. So what does that mean? Uh, in a previous video we covered um, somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation. So in that video we discussed that um, when a B cell becomes activated it can, some of the daughter cells uh, after mitosis can undergo this process of affinity maturation whereby mutations occur in the variable regions and those mutations will alter the affinity of immunoglobulins for antibodies and hopefully increase the affinity and those are selected for. With IgM, uh, when a B cell makes IgM, it doesn't uh, undergo a somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation. It's just it's the first line of defense. Let's just release IgM. It has some affinity for the antigen, but it's not as much as the other antibody isotypes. Because those will undergo somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation. So IgM is released. It has affinity for the antigen, but not as high as other ones. So that's why we call it low affinity antibody. So when IgM is released, um, and how is it going to help us get rid of this pathogen? What's its effector function? So the one thing we need to talk about is the quaternary structure of IgM. So when it's released, it's released as, you know, I'm drawing this Y-shaped molecule. Obviously, you should know that that's two heavy chain proteins and two light chain proteins held together by disulfide bonds. But when IgMs are released, they actually assemble into pentamers. And there's another protein called the J chain, which is a protein that holds together. It grabs onto the constant region of IgM, and it links five of them together. So if you find IgM, if you look at IgM in your body, it's assembled into these pentamers. The thing to know about a pentamer of IgMs, well, we know that a Ig molecule has two antigen binding sites at the tips of those Ys. If we've got five IgMs, then we must have 10 antigen binding sites. So that allows this structure to bind with a relatively good affinity to an uh, antigen. So let's say this uh, virus or this bacteria has elicited a, an immune response and a B cell has recognized it, and the B cell has started to secrete IgM. 
So IgM, as a pentamer, will recognize, will bind to, with some affinity, the pathogen. Great. How is that helping us fight this infection? Well, if you recall, complement, uh, specifically the classical pathway, uh, is recognizing IgM, specifically C1Q. The C1Q protein in the C1 molecule binds IgM. And when we talk about things binding antibodies, we usually talk about the FC region of the antibody. So when we talk about antibody structure, there's the constant region, there's the variable regions. The um, region um, of the antibody where proteins typically bind are that FC region, the part that's made of just the heavy chain protein. So uh, C1Q, you learned previously, binds the uh, IgM. And now I'm telling you it binds specifically the FC mu region. So this is the region that's coded for by the constant mu gene segment in the heavy chain gene. So C1Q protein binds the FC mu region of IgM, and that allows the complement uh, pathway, specifically the classical pathway, to activate against this pathogen. So this pathogen will be uh, destroyed using the classical pathway of complement act activation. So now you know how IgM works to help clear an infection. The other thing I want you to know for each of these uh, antibodies that we talk about is where you will find the um, antibody in the body. Uh, where is it secreted, right? Humoral immunity refers to humors, something about the fluids in your body. Uh, and that's where you're going to find antibodies in your humors. But not every antibody isotype is found in every one of your fluids. IgM, it's a very large molecule. This pentamer, it's very large. So it stays primarily in your bloodstream and your lymph um, fluid because the B cells that are secreting IgM the B cells uh, in lymph nodes can secrete IgM into your lymphatic fluid, and the B cells in your spleen um, or other or bone marrow, for example, can secrete IgM into your bloodstream. IgM uh, is typically too big to enter into, into tissues, so you're not going to find IgM protecting and patrolling into your tissues. You're typically going to find it only in your lymph fluid and your blood plasma. So that's the first uh, I, uh, Ig that we talk about, IgM. The next video will cover Ig E A um, D. There's one more, isn't there? A G E and D. There you go. That's what they are. <laughs>